not just saying that. I was excited to to know that we were going to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen, church. And I don't know how many of you can just exalt the name of the Holy Spirit and, and forget about how busy your day was or forget about um, who stepped on your foot today and just are able to say, Holy Spirit, I'm grateful that I'm in your house. I'm grateful that I get to be with my brothers and sisters. I'm happy that we get to worship together. I'm happy that we get to praise together. So we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for getting us here with one mind, one soul, one body one spirit in the name of Jesus declaring and decreeing that we are declaring that you are Jehovah Jireh you are the healer you are a provider you are our deliverer and you're about to fill us up father God so that we can fill up all those who we come in contact with father God for the rest of the week so that we can have this place filled on Sunday amen church amen church amen church how many know that it's not always about you? How many know that you are a vessel? How many want to continue to be used as such so that we can win those people that God puts in front of us? Amen. So with this, we begin to worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. tus pies al de mi corazón a tus pies entrego lo que soy este lugar de mi seguridad donde nadie me pueda señalar me Oh 
pies y aquí permaneceré a los pies de Cristo. de ti Señor en esta en este día Señor Espíritu Santo Haz lo que tú quieras esta noche Jesús You are welcome Holy Spirit We ask you to have your way in this place tonight We ask you to have your way in our hearts Holy Spirit We ask you to have your way Holy Spirit We ask you to have your way Holy Spirit Only you know our need Jesus Only you know Father God what we need Lord God We come to lay it all on the altar Father God, this evening, Holy Spirit, we ask that you restore the brokenhearted right now, right now, right now. Jesus, deliver the ones that are captive. Father God, bring healing to the ones that are sick in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Father God, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I worship you, Jesus. I believe you Jesus I honor you Jesus I glorify you I glorify you I glorify you I glorify you I declare that chains are being broken right now in the name of Jesus right now chains of confusion are being broken in the name of Jesus chains of doubt are being broken right now in the name of Jesus anything that can stop us from going into the presence of God I come I sever you right now in the name of Jesus and I declare that each and every one of us are covered by the blood of the great I am the mighty lamb Oh, Señor, te adoramos, te adoramos. I don't know about you, but I know that we come on a Wednesday and we're used to the same routine. But I'm here to tell you that every time we come into the house of God, we should come with an expectation of his power. We should come with an expectation of his glory. We should come an expectation not only that we're going to receive, but that we have the honor and the privilege to worship him, to glorify him, to open up our mouths and to say we love you Jesus we need you Jesus we need you Namasheterevasaya we worship you we are hungry for you Jesus we want more we want more we want more we want more I want more Jesus I'm thirsty for you Father God I'm thirsty for you Holy Spirit we love you Jesus we love you Jesus we love you Jesus If we can put Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Because we tend to forget that the one that we came to meet with was with the Holy Spirit. And before I give the mic to the minister tonight, I'm going to give him the mic with the atmosphere already ready and shifted. I'm going to give him the mic where souls are ready to receive what God has for us. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I want the instrumental. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We don't come to waste our time. We don't come because we have nothing better to do. We come because we know that there is power in the name of Jesus. We know that there's someone greater than us. We know that there's someone more powerful than us. And we submit ourselves to you, Jehovah. We submit ourselves to you, Yahweh. We submit ourselves to you, Almighty Lamb of God. We submit ourselves to you because you are much greater than who we are we mean nothing we are nobodies without you Jesus and I'm not ashamed to worship you 
And I'm not ashamed to glorify you. And we're not ashamed to lift your name on high. And we're not ashamed to say that we need you. And we're not ashamed to say that we want you. And we're not ashamed to say that we're hungry and that we're thirsty for you, Jesus. There's nothing worth more. Come on, off together, you know it. There will ever come close. Nothing can compare. Come on, y'all. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. I've tasted and seen. Sweetest of love. Come on. When my heart becomes free, declare it. My shame is undone. There's no shame in the presence of God. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Ready? There's nothing worth more that would ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I taste it and see. Of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is under your presence Lord. cry it out let this be our cry holy spirit you are welcome We're longing for you, Jesus. We're longing for you tonight, Lord. We ask that the heavens are open and that you pour out, Jesus. Let us be come. Come on, church. More aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become, let us become. Let us become. We want more, Jesus. I want more, I want more. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Bienvenido, Espíritu Santo.
Come on, let us give the Holy Spirit a round of applause and a warm welcome into this place. Many times we believe that the Holy Spirit is just subject to a building or a religious facility, but in reality, the Holy Spirit is only subject to a soul that's willing to invite him in. Amen? And I want that to register in our minds. I want us to understand that and comprehend that that is something so real that at times we ourselves as believers lose sight of that. The Holy Spirit is only coming to a place that he's welcome to. Amen? So tonight we're going to continue on the same sessions that we've been teaching on, the power of the tongue. Tonight is a special night because I'm going to be uh, introducing to each and every one of you a minister that has been added to the house who's going to be teaching tonight's class. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Eddie, Minister Eddie Diaz, who's going to be bringing us the word tonight as we continue on the teachings on the power of the tongue. Amen. God bless the church. Amen. God bless the church. Amen. Um, it is an honor and a privilege, amen, to bring the, the Bible session, the Bible study, the preaching, the message. I, when I begin, to, when I begin to, um, to start this, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I can really sit and bring a study. And then something came and said, but it's a Bible session. <laughs> Amen. So I took the advantage and tried to weave in my own, my own style, um, you know, led by the Holy Spirit of God. And we honor and thank the pastors of the house for giving us the privilege and the honor to bring this tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, if we can have the instrumental playing in the background, please, I would appreciate that. And um, like pastor said, we are going to talk about the power of the tongue. I got to admit. Nine years of being um, a participant of the church. This is the first time that I will be bringing the power of the tongue. Never spoke about it. And um, it, was, it was nice. It was nice because it's a reality. And in the midst of bringing this, you actually start checking yourself. And you start to say and you start to realize, you know, I need to have more control of my tongue. So like I was saying, tonight's title was The Power of the Tongue. Power is defined as possession of control, authority, or influence over others. In the book of Ecclesiastics, chapter 3, 7, it says, A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. And I just want to focus on that last part of the verse. It says, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. Now, when we look at the definition of the word power, it is defined as possession of control. There is a time to be silent, and there is a time to speak. Power is authority. There is a time to be silent. There is a time to speak. Power is influence over others. There is a time to be silent. And there is a time to speak. You hold that control. You hold that authority. You hold that influence over others. Look at somebody and say, it's all on me. I said, look at somebody and say, it's all on me. I said, Pablo, look at Stephanie and say, it's all on me. Stephanie, look at Pablo and say, it's all on me. I said, pastor, it's all on me. The power of the control is all on me. The power of the authority is all on me. The power to have influence over others is all on me. See, my paper said, look at somebody and say it's all on me. But we already did that, didn't we? Do you feel like saying it one more time? Say it one more time. The beauty of the tongue is that if you decide to be silent or if you decide to speak, it has the same value. It holds power. The tongue has value. It holds power whether you use it or not. I said the beauty of the tongue is 
if you decide to be silent or if you de decide to speak, it holds the same value as the tongue. Whether you use it or not. So I began to think about the topic, the power of the tongue. And I began to think about the power and the silence of the tongue. To contain it, to control it, to hold it. King Solomon, the wisest man on the face of this earth, knew the importance of silence and speaking, but overall, the timing of when it should be put into action. I thought about people that were protesting silence and defend the cause that they were fighting for without screaming, without cursing, without spitting, or without making any other sounds with their mouth. The power that they were containing by just being stuck and saying, I defend this purpose, but I will remain silent with no words. That's the power of the tongue. Because people want to provoke you, and people want to shake you up, and people want to take something out of you. They just want to say, talk to me. They want to take a reaction out of you. And when you come in, you remain silent. A man of authority and a man that has control and a man that has influence over others, people are going to keep jerking you. We want to see something out of you. We expect it. We need it. But that's when it falls on. It's all on me. So they would defend the cause that they were fighting for without screaming, without cursing, without spitting, or making any other sounds with their mouth and still catch the attention of news reporters, bystanders, and government authority. And by their action of silence, they were still get their point across. They will still get their point across. They will still have the police come and try to drag them out. They will still have bystanders coming and saying, what's going on over there? By just simply sitting down and staying shut. The power of the tongue Holds power only when you develop the skills of how to properly use that instrument. I'm gonna say that one more time. The power of the tongue holds power only when you develop the skills of how to properly use that instrument. A powerless tongue is one that has no control, no authority, and no influence over other. It's undeveloped. It's un developed. It has no power. It's powerless. That's when a person can sit in silence. They can walk right past you. Why? Because you have no authority. You have no control of that tongue. And you have no influence over others. You are powerless. The apostle Paul in 1st of Corinthians, first of Corinthians, excuse me, chapter 13, verse 11 says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. A child's speech is undeveloped. His understanding is crude, meaning not yet processed or refined. In other words, unpurified. But when the child becomes a man, his speech becomes subject to his mind. His understanding is tempered and his knowledge is complete. It's then when your silence becomes powerful. It's then when your speaking becomes powerful. It's then when your tongue becomes powerful. It is fully developed. The book of James, chapter 3, 8 says, But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. In other words, every man falls into a season where their tongue continuously erupts in outbursts of uncontrolled emotions. 
Should I repeat that one more time? I said, in other words, every man falls into a season. You will fall into a season where your tongue will take the control and the mix that is going on in your emotions and it will erupt. And now your emotions are building up and you're just speaking, you're just speaking, you're just speaking without thinking. Uncontrolled emotions. If you don't have control of your emotions, you're not going to have control over your mouth. You're not going to have control over your tongue. It's impossible. Church, be wise not to be contaminated. I said, church, be wise not to be contaminated. There is a source of division and unity when united minds become contaminated tongues. I said there is a source of division that wants to come in unity and make everybody under the same mindset of having contaminated tongues. Just because you see a group of people and we're speaking the same thing, it doesn't make it right. That's why there's a source of division and unity. The vision and unity, when united minds become contaminated tongues. Now what was given good for edification becomes destructions to others. What was given to impart grace to hearers becomes death. You can find that in Ephesians 4.29. Now you are surrounded by the thought of death, the feeling of death, and the speaking of death. In other words, there is a declaration of death. Someone has spoken, and someone is still speaking. There are people that are declaring death over the church, death over the prophets of God, death over the establishments and the principles of God, death over ministries, death over household, death over genders, death over generations, death over nations, communities, and most importantly, death over you. There is a cloud of darkness that is trying to overpower your light and leave you lifeless. Demonic strongholds that are not allowing you to expand in the territory that God has given you. There is a different language that is trying to possess your mouth so that your mouth can only contain death. Tell somebody it's all on me. Tell somebody it's all on me. In the book of John 11, Jesus is faced with the death of his friend Lazarus. Through this chapter, we can see that Jesus himself was confronted with believers that didn't believe. He was confronted with believers that didn't believe. They believed to a certain extent. With people that couldn't obtain the words of the living God due to what they have experienced, meaning the death of Lazarus, and mocked. He was also mocked. But not for once did he doubt the fact that the death of Lazarus was for his glory. It says... John 11, 17 reads, now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give to you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again. In the resurrection on the last day, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? 
She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God who is coming to the world. But she didn't answer the question. She said, yes, Lord. But she, she avoided the question. Do you believe that he will rise? You see, she didn't, she didn't understand what Jesus was trying to say at that moment. Do to past experiences. Different season, same God. Different season, same God. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved them? But some of them said, could he not who opened the eyes of the blind man also keep this man from dying? You see, the point of, of why am I bringing this is because it's the power of the tongues. And do not become contaminated by your surroundings. You see, Jesus was physically in a place where they were speaking death, where there was a death man. But before he approached that location, he said, this is for my glory. I see his death. When I approach them and I say, do you believe? They say, I believe, but he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. I believe, Jesus. I believe you are the son of God. I believe you. I, I, I believe you can do a miracle. But he dead. But do you believe that he will rise? Yes. In the last day of the resurrection, when everybody rises, no, I'm talking about right now. Give God a round of applause while I take a drink. I'm so thirsty right now. Thank you so kindly. Where were we? I told, I told Pastor Melly, tell Pastor, I don't think I'm going to need 45 minutes. I don't think I'm ready for this right now. I told my wife, too, like, I don't know. I don't think I got enough. I bought a binder because I see how the ministers roll up in here with their binders. <laughs> I had to stop at the dollar store. I'm going to upgrade it. I'm going to upgrade it, though. <laughs> God is good. God is good. Amen. You got to imitate what's good. You got to imitate what's good, church. So when they speak in life, speak life. And when they speak in death, speak life. I said, and when they speak in death, speak life. Do not become contaminated. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could he not who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, I'm telling you, this just, we're not understanding each other here. 
Jesus was not, they were not understanding what Jesus, Lord, Lord, by the time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around me, the people that had the mindset of death, the people that were not understanding about the resurrection that they had in front of their eyes, in front of their faces. I pray over them. That they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out. His hands and feet bound in linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. This man was dead. I don't know if you watch zombie movies. He was a zombie, if, if you could relate to that. I don't know if you believe in a dead man walking. If you want to relate to that, relate to that. I don't know if you can comprehend what was going on. The power of the tongue. Jesus called him by his name. Lazarus, come out. And he comes out with evidence that there was death over his flesh. With evidence that he was dead for four days. With evidence that people were moaning. That people were crying. That people were, were testifying. That people had declared and confirmed the death of Lazarus. He came out with all types and forms of confirmation. But by the power of the tongue and life, Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. Tell somebody it's all on me. Let's leave that alone. Luke chapter 6, 45 says, the good person out of the good treasures of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasures produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Matthew 10, 28, I want you to listen to this. I'm going to repeat it again. I want you to pay, place close attention. Luke 6, 45, if you're writing Luke 6, 45 reads, the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth speaks. Matthew 10, 28 says, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Proverbs 21, 23 says, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. I bring these verses together to shine the light on the fact that in Luke 6, 4, it clearly states, and you cannot find this, and if you do show me, this was a pure revelation that took me like about five hours of being stuck, maybe three, because I was struggling on Monday. After work, I was struggling, and then it just hit me. I kept putting it on the, uh, on the laptop, and I kept erasing. No, I kept putting it on the laptop and kept erasing. But I bring these verses together to shine the light on the fact that in Luke 6, 4, it clearly states that a good person, meaning body, out of the good treasures, spirit of his heart, soul, produces good. And the evil person, 
body out of his evil treasures, spirit produces evil, his soul. For out of the abundance of his heart, so his mouth speaks. I'm going to repeat that one more time. It says, The good person, body, out of the good treasures, spirit, of his heart, so produces good. And the evil person, body, out of his evil treasures, spirit produces evil, so. For out of the abundance of his heart, so his mouth should speak. Matthew 10, 28 says, do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. We prevent Matthew 10, 28 happening, meaning destroying both body and soul in hell by simply Proverbs 21, 23 that says whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles equals hell. God just put it. My wife was in the vanity room. I was like, yo, babe, you got a second? I got to show you this revelation. She came and sat on the couch and she was like, I was like, I'll catch you on Wednesday night. <laughs> to conclude this Bible session on the power of the tongue. I wanted to point out the definition of the word power. Remember, church, possession to control, authority, and influence over others. And that in our seasons to discern the time to be silent and a time to speak. You hold that power when your tongue is fully developed. Remember, it's going to take some time. And unfortunately, for some people, this can take a lifetime. Do not be contaminated with the thoughts and the language of death and always be aware of your surroundings. Identify these things and begin to ask yourself, am I becoming powerful or powerless? Never doubt that you, that you are life and that God, the God that you serve is life. Meaning, take control of your season and begin to speak life into death over all it's all on me. Overall, it's all on me. Wait, it's all on me. It's all on you. Guard your heart, guard your soul. We know that fearing people that carry powerless tongues can result in us becoming powerless and speaking evil. The punishment for that is hell. So if there's two words or two phrases that I leave with you tonight for the power of the tongue is guard your heart and guard your soul. Because once those two things are guarded, then your tongue and your mouth is guarded. And at times, we need to understand, and I just want to focus on this before... I give my part is the influence. Is the influence. You can become a positive influence over others, or you can become that person that is contaminated, that allows people to come and contaminate you with thoughts, and you begin to speak a language that is evil that's only going to result in hell. I end this with the phrase, say it, y'all. It's all on me. God bless you, church. God bless you, church. I don't know. Who